Jack, lovely to see you today. Um, firstly, huge congratulations. Second Paralympics. Um, just put into words what this means to you. Uh, to go to the second Paralympics, it's just for me, it's like a phenomenal achievement, especially after the past I don't know, five years that I've had with you know, injuries just coming out, coming out of my ears, basically. And with the COVID just chucked in the middle, it's been a, it's been a really hard graft. Um, so to actually, you know, on selection day where I thought I've got a piece of paper in my hand that said, yes, you're going. I was like, oh, thank God for that. <laughs> Great and feeling of relief. Tough. Yeah, it has been a tough few years for me. Well, I was, I was reading about you and um, obviously you made your debut in Rio and I think you were pretty honest at the time that, you, that, that Tokyo was always the target. So oh, yeah. Rio, Rio was never even in my sights, really, because when I, went, when I sort of started training on the squad, it was always like, oh, if you, you know, I, to be fair, though, I've been doing judo for a long time. I've been on the, Olymp I've been on the um, England programmes and the, and because uh, that's where I lived at the time. I've been on the... British programs coming through, and so it's on one of the mainstream side. So it wasn't that like judo or Paralympic judo. It's just the Paralympic side of things that were brand new to me. So as I was coming through, it was kind of like, right, you've got a good bit of potential here. We we think you could do well, especially on this side of the sport, because you know it's it's more suited to you. And um, so yeah, and it was like we we think you'd be a fantastic opportunity for Tokyo. But we, you know we start taking some events, and I started doing well at these events, and. I think we kind of thought like, you know, halfway through the cycle, we thought, you know, we could actually go to Rio as well. I mean, I ended up finishing third in the world or something. We think it's even better than this time. Because you were a teenager when, when you went to Rio. So just yeah, yeah. what was the whole experience like? Oh, it, was, it was overwhelming, really. Um, it was such a great experience. I think I remember just walking into the food hall, especially, and it's been like, oh, my God, this is the best thing ever. <laughs> Why well, was the food so good? Food in one place. I think I could just spend hours in this place. Is <laughs> that that woman died and went to heaven or something? <laughs> but having had that experience yeah. in Rio, and it's now definitely going to help this time. I think. I think what Rio did so well, fans like they were so loud, they were crazy about it. Um, they were, you know, they, were, they would support everyone. You go out there and you think you start. You start your first fight with a bit of cheer. And by your second, third fight, you'd have to play banging on the sides with them clappers. And I'm I'm profoundly dust. When I take my hearing aids out, I can't really hear anything, but I can still feel the atmosphere going on around me. I was like, oh, I can actually feel that they I've got people supporting me. That's so unusual for judo. You don't get many people following you around or anything. So it was so crazy. And that atmosphere, it's like when the hair's on the back of your neck, isn't it? When you have that oh, yeah, sensory yeah, yeah. feeling of of just a wonderful atmosphere, which those memories you will keep forever and ever, won't you? Oh yeah, and I think I think even even though I'm deaf and visually impaired, and I can't really feel the crowd. You know, I can't really hear the crowd. Like, having the that atmosphere, you can you can definitely feel it, and I think that definitely did help. But it makes you think that. I can't sit, I can't hang around on the floor looking a bit tired. I've got to get back up and look hard again. So you're like, right, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> the, um, crowd, before... the crowd expects me to perform here, so I need to get up and go. <laughs> before we look ahead to Tokyo and see how things are shaping up for you, I just want to kind of start from the very beginning because, as you mentioned, you know, you were born um, from, obviously, your dad's in the military. You were born in St. Athens, and, and I read a wonderful story about you, that you had two options when you were a kid to stay fit. One was to go to ballet classes or to go to judo. But you started with ballet, didn't you? Well, that, that's the story everyone always asks. I'm not, I'm, not even <laughs> sure, I'm not even sure how true it is at this point. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's probably been embellished by everyone that's, everyone that's wrote about it. Just probably. Thought, probably, but... Essentially, yeah, that is true. Um, went to a, I was on an RAF camp in Northern Ireland at the point, and the, the, the camp had a couple of clubs that were suitable for kids of my age, and it was a ballet club or a judo club, and then somehow I ended up in the ballet, and there's some fantastic pictures of me on a pink tutu or doing a, a ballet recital, and there's a fire engine in the background, and everyone's dancing, and I'm like, fire engine, wow! <laughs> <laughs> and running for everybody, and then I think at that point I thought that the uh, easily distracted um, kid that's about twice the size of everyone else is probably not suited for ballet. 
And then the rest, as they say, is history because the then is, judo yeah. became your passion, right? Exactly, yeah. So we just went along to judo club and um, before, you know, before long, I was really started enjoying it. And we had a couple of Olympians at the time come to visit our club and our little, our little judo club in Northern Ireland. And I remember it was like the best thing ever. Like, wow, you know, I, no one else probably have heard of them. And I probably hadn't really have heard of them, but, you know, because you can, they've been to the Olympics, you're like, I want to go to the Olympics. That's everyone you can dream of, really. It's amazing how inspiring that is when you meet people who've done it, who've achieved great things. And oh, yeah, it's a great yeah. motivational tool then, isn't it? To kind really, of go, yeah. hold on, that's, that's, I want to book my ticket, you know? Yeah. I think from that early age, but it was always like, oh, wow, the Olympics, that's amazing. But I'm not going to go to the Olympics. And, and I was never, I've never really deluded by the fact that I was going to go to the Olympics because maybe, it's, maybe it's just a bit of a mindset at the time that I wasn't, I didn't see myself as a judo fighter. I just saw myself as a recreational judo player. And it took quite a few years, um, around around my early teenage years, I started winning a few decent medals and things um, to really sort of change that mindset. And meeting my current coach, um, who's still the Paralympic coach now, um, he's been my coach all the way through, and he's kind of really helped shape that mindset. Like, you're not a judo player, you're a judo fighter. There's a, big, there's a really big difference and it's, it's knowing in your head that you do every training session so you can go to Tokyo, so you can go to the big competitions you want to go and perform rather than just turn up and, you know, hopefully, don't, you know, ball out in the first round or something. You mentioned your coach there, but we have to mention the squad because I know as a squad, you guys are very, very tight, especially during the last 18 months or so uh, during COVID where everything's been very, very different, especially in terms of preparing for a Paralympics. Yeah, so, I, I mean, I I think we're probably one of the closest squads out there, like in terms of uh, me and Skelly, um, I don't know if you've read much about Skelly, but me and Skelly have basically been through this whole journey together. So we we both went to the Paralympic Inspiration Programme in 2012, and we both lived nearby each other. He was in Hull, I was in Gainsborough at the time, so it's kind of like about 40 minutes from each other. So we, we'd end up at the same clubs regularly, and. John G's from Scunthorpe, which is about in between us both. So us three here were kind of like a package. And none of us were part of the Paralympic programme. And that's the thing. So he wasn't on the team either. And we kind of went to this Paralympic Inspiration Day as future, you know, like, oh, these guys are both visually impaired. They do judo. Maybe they can go in the future. And it was so inspirational. We got there and we, just, we met a couple of the Paralympic guys. We went into the village. We had all like, different types of training and stuff. I remember even at one point they came in and pretended to drug test us and it was like, oh my God, are we going to take our week? Like, what? <laughs> what, what, have I been, what have I been taking? I don't know. <laughs> but you're young at the time, you think, are they actually going to drug test me? Have I been taking drugs? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, so we, we both went through that whole journey and at the end of it, we kind of just sat down together and said, like, oh, we, need to, we need to go to that game. That was amazing. Like, that's what we both want to do. And we, we kind of made a pact to each other that we're going to go to Rio. I was always thinking, oh, you're going to, you might go to Rio because he's a good three or four years older than me. And you might be able to get there. I'm Tokyo. But yeah, we'll make this pact. We're going to get to Rio together. And then shortly after, John Z got the head Paralympic coach, I think kind of, kind of off the back of working with me and Skelly and um, his own ambition to be a judo coach at the National Centre. So he kind of got the job and then me and Skelly came through with him and... He would take us home every weekend and stuff like that. And it was, it was just really nice. He, he said, and we've, you know, me and Scott lived together for a long time. And you really do get that close bond. And now we've got new people around us who, and I say new, we're not new anymore, but they kind of just came onto our team and established themselves. And such a great presence that everyone's, everyone is needed for a different reason on that team. And that's why we're so good. And, you know, five years on from being a teenager and experiencing your first Paralympics in Rio and now going to Tokyo, um, mentally and physically, how are you feeling? Are you in good shape? Yeah, definitely. I'm phys physically in good shape. I'm mentally just ready to go. Like This cycle has been so long mm. and it's been so difficult that in my head I know that I've overcome more hardships than everyone else. That I've, had, I've had three surgeries in this cycle for injuries. Um, I've had quite a lot of other tears and things. Like, you know, I spent a good two and a half, three years off the mat in this cycle um, for injuries. So I know that I've mentally had to overcome more than anyone else on the mat. 
And the positive of these injuries, of each time I've been injured, I've had to come back just a little bit better. So I've had to come back a stronger fighter and I have to do my rehab just, just a little bit better than last time because, you know, the first, my first injury, I was rubbish. I, you know, it was, it was straight after Rio, so I got injured while I was out in Rio. Um, I tore my, all my ligaments in my ankle, so I, I got surgery like the week I got back from Rio. It was quite a nasty one. Obviously, when you when you just come back from the games and you've got four years to your next cycle, you think, oh, I'll just take it slow. It didn't really. Like, I'll, I'll do what I'll do what I'm told to do, but I won't go above and beyond. You know what I mean? And then each time I got injured, it's like, right, it's getting a little bit closer. <laughs> I need to be a little bit faster. And then I had a surgery on my elbow in November, just gone. And that was six months. So I'm kind of thinking, I mean, the games is. I'm only going to have a few months between that and the games. Like, and we're having a year out with COVID almost. It's kind of like, I need to get back as fast as I can. I need to get back as strong as I can. So that was really a driving factor to making me the best athlete I could be at that time. Um, so yeah, I definitely think that it's been a, it's been a, a hard experience, but a positive experience to make me better. And of course, when you think of Japan, you know, they absolutely love judo as, as a country. So no doubt you're looking forward to that experience of going out there and competing. Oh yeah, the Japanese, the Japanese are just amazing for judo because um, I don't know how much you know about it, but the Budokan, which is where the venue has been held, is kind of like the spiritual home of judo. I've been over there to watch uh, a couple of competitions. I've seen the World Championships over there. I've seen the All Japan Championships over there. And every time it's just the most amazing, like, goosebumps little moments because they're just so into it so to actually get to step on the mat and be a fighter that'll be something that i just remember forever well we are going to be cheering you on jack we wish you all the best i mean if you want to already... get up at two o'clock in the morning be i'll be there i'm there you, you, i'm you know, there i think you're the first person that said they'll actually be there everyone else is like two two <laughs> I'll, watch my lights. I'll be there Listen, we'll all be supporting you and we wish you all the best for your second Paralympics. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.